Hi everyone. I have here a uh, seven jewel Elgin pocket watch from about the turn of the last century, um, which I'm gradually restoring and which has required a lot of work. And so I put in, um, I put in new bushings, I put in new balance staff, I put in a new regulator pin, which I posted the other day. Uh, so I finally got the watch working and it's working quite nicely, but there's a big problem, which is that uh, the watch is not keeping time. In fact, it's losing a lot of time. And um, this is occurring despite the fact that, uh, you know, the watch makes good amplitude, the regulator pins are, are appropriately spaced, the hairspring is in nice shape, or rather I put it back in a nice shape. Um, and so what I think has happened here is that uh, someone has replaced the balance wheel at some, at some point in the past and combined a balance wheel uh, with a hairspring that is not vibrated to it. So uh, a hairspring and a balance wheel, um, uh, they go together. So uh, when you make a balance wheel, which I've got here, the hairspring, the small coiled spring, is fitted to a particular balance wheel. So the length of the spring is, um, is cut uh, for the appropriate weight of the balance wheel to make sure that the balance vibrates or, or oscillates the appropriate number of times per hour in the case of this this watch uh, 18,000 um, so um, so uh, what I think I've got here is a case of heavy balance wheel and a relatively too long balance spring so the watch is beating uh, too few times per hour and it's losing a tremendous amount of time in this case 850 900 seconds a day so this is well beyond what I can do with the regulator. So what I'm going to do today is rem gently remove weight from the balance wheel while poising it. And I'm going to see if I can get it into the range where I can actually use the regulator to adjust the watch. It's too bad that the watch has been um, messed around in this way, but um, you know we can make the best of a bad situation by using this wheel, which I believe to be the wrong wheel, but whatever, came with the watch. Um, and carefully removing weight from under the screws while, uh, while poising it. That is, make sure that the wheel is of the same weight all the way around the perimeter. And that will make sure that the watch keeps fairly close time in all uh, positions. So let's just go through what I've got on the table here. Uh, so I've got, my, uh, it's, I've got my balance wheel, my balance complete with hairspray. Tweezers, of course, some pegwood. Here I've got um, some hand hairspring removing levers. So in order to poise the balance wheel, I'm going to have to take the hairspring off the balance. For that, I'm using these uh, Bergen uh, hairspring removing levers. Uh, you can also do it by slightly opening up the collet. Um, but this collet fits fairly tight on this staff, and so uh, I'm going to use these levers. I've got a little hair cut from my bench brush, and I'll explain in a moment why I've got that. I've got a poising tool, a watchmaker's poising tool. Uh, so this is a really quite an interesting tool. Um, what this does is it allows you to set the balance on the on its pivots um, on these little ruby jaws. And we're gonna make the uh, tool exactly level using the spirit level. And then when we place the wheel on, we're gonna see where the heavy spot is in the wheel. That's gonna roll to the bottom, okay? Then we can choose that screw, remove weight from the underside of that screw, and poise it again until we've got a um, until we've got a perfectly poised balance wheel. And I've got some screw undercutting tools, some old tools here. So the idea here is that you don't want to mess up some screws. You don't want to mess up your screws. Some people just file the underside. This is not a great way of doing it. In particular, the screws on this watch are, from what I can tell, um, not touched on the outside. So I don't want to mar the appearance of the screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the screws from the balance wheel and then I'm going to cut, just shave a little bit off the underside uh, and then put the screws back in. So I will have removed weight from the screws without changing their external appearance. Got a loop, of course, and I've got a little bit of pith wood, which I can use to just clean off the, um, the jaws of the poison tool here. Make sure it's all clean and it's ready to receive my balance. So the first thing I'm going to do here is take the hairspring off my balance wheel. So I'm using my hand levers, I mean, not hand levers, hairspring levers. 
And what we want to do is get underneath the uh, brass collet that attaches the hairspring to the balance staff. You want to make sure you want to get under the collet and not beside the collet. Otherwise, when you lever up, you may damage the hairspring. So this is quite a delicate operation. I'm going to put my loop on and I'm going to try to get underneath the hairspring, underneath the collet, and lever it off the balance. It's popped off. Then we can put the hairspring safely away. We're not going to need it during the rest of this exercise. Into the parts tray, parts tray away. So there's my balance wheel without the hairspring. I'm just putting my hand underneath, God forbid. Um, so there's our staff. You can see uh, riveted through the wheel. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the tiny, tiny pivots of that staff on the poison tool and try to find the heavy spot on the balance. You'll notice right now I'm not wearing finger cots. I always wear finger cots when I assemble a watch after it's been cleaned. You don't want to get uh, fingerprints on it. But I found that when you're poising, you need every, uh, every nerve ending available to you. So uh, you may see me touch the balance with my bare fingers, but what I'm going to do afterward is once the balance is poised, I'm going to re-clean it. Okay, so um, yeah, let's get started. So here's a close-up of my poising tool. You can see the uh, spirit level here to make sure that the uh, tool is exactly level on the table. You can see my jaws here, my um, uh, agate, I, be I believe it's pronounced, jaws, right? Which move uh, in and out. I can screw them in and out, right? To adjust them to the appropriate length of the staff. And I've got adjustable arms. So I'm gonna use that, those in conjunction with the spirit level to uh, perfectly level off the poising tool. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna stand up and look straight down. Okay, that looks good to me. So I now have got my watch balance loaded up on the tool. So what I've done is adjusted the width of the jaws to accommodate the balance staff. Now you can see that the balance staff has two very fine pivots. Um, they taper down and then the last part of the pivot is uh, just cylindrical and we want the balance to be resting on that cylindrical part on the sharp edge of the tool. Right? And that way the uh, heaviest part of the balance will pull down. Right? We don't want the balance to want to roll in a particular direction uh, just because it's on a sloped part of the uh, staff. We want it to be resting on the cylindrical part. So that's what I've done here. I've got the balance set up. It looks like the heavy spot is already pulled down, uh, but we want to make sure that it's not just resting on some maybe imperfection in the staff. So uh, in a moment, I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay, it's time to start actually poising the balance. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to start the balance rolling and we're going to see where it comes to a stop. So I have here a hair that I've cut from my bench brush, a very fine hair. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to start the balance rolling. Some people use an air blower, but I think that's too much force. It'll just run right off the end or it'll turn sideways and uh, fall into the, the jaws of the, of, the, um, of the poising tool. So I'm going to push it very gently with this uh, strand of hair. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the whole assembly with this clean uh, Tupperware container, right? And the reason for that is just because uh, I don't want air flows in the room, although there are very few, to uh, influence where the balance comes to a stop. Okay, so I'm gonna start the balance rolling, uh, then uh, cover it and see where it stops. A little more. Okay, the balance has come to a stop, more or less where it started. Um, so we can now identify the heavy spot. So we can observe the top spot at the top. The heavy spot will be obviously opposite that, facing down. Right? So uh, I can identify the screw 
uh, on the top and then I know that the screw opposite that is where I need to remove weight. So I'm making a mental note of that. It's a slightly shorter screw, not a mean time screw, as this is not a good enough quality watch to have mean time screws. It's a slightly shorter screw on the impulse jewel side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is remove that screw. Okay, so I'm now holding the balance. I've identified the screw that I need to remove. Uh, so I've got a nice fitting screwdriver here. There are screw slots on these screws are actually quite large. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is gently, gently try to remove this screw. Probably this screw has not been removed in a century, so it might be a little stuck in there. We're gonna see what happens. I'm supporting it with my fingers, but I'm not putting really any downward pressure. I just want the screwdriver to fit well enough that it can turn out the screw without me having to force anything. Okay, so we've now removed our uh, balance screw that we're going to lighten. Uh, there's my finger for comparison. So this is a very, 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 very small screw. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, it's just over a millimeter in width. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to remove weight from this thing. And what we're going to do to do that is we're going to use one of these uh, undercutting tools. So I've got three here, all in various states of disrepair, and I need to clean them up. Uh, but what these are, are little, um, they're screwdriver shaped. They have little a little circular serrated edge on the end. And so what we can do is we can put the screw threads down into these uh, undercutters, and we can turn it, and what it's going to do is it's going to um, just scrape out a little bit of material from under the head of the screw. And that's going to make the screw light enough that it changes the poise of the balance. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now I'm putting the screw back in the balance wheel, in the balance wheel rim. So I'm holding this thing vertically, and what I'm going to do, place the screw, and uh, screw it in very gently. If I was doing this a lot, I might think about investing in a balance scaffold that's a, a tool to hold the balance while you are... Um, while you are manipulating screws like this. But a $2,000 tool, uh, maybe that's wrong. And they used to, they used to be more common, but I, I never see them come up, so maybe one day. Um, one thing to note here is that if you touch the balance with your hands, you can't go ahead and poise it because what you've done is warmed up, caused certain parts of the balance to expand, and that's gonna make your poising difficult. So I'm putting the balance off to the side for a moment. I'll take a little break, then I'm gonna come back, poise the balance again. Okay, round two. Start the balance rolling and then cover it. Okay. Similar area, different screw on the bottom now. So I've got a new target. Okay, I admit it, it's now many rounds later. Um, I ended up having to remove quite a lot of weight from the wheel. The wheel was really quite out of poise. Uh, and I ended up having to be a bit more forceful uh, pressing down on the undercutters in order to remove enough material. Um, so now I've got to a point of reasonable poise in the wheel. I don't think it's perfect, but it's certainly much, much better than it was. And one way we can check this is by rolling the balance on the poising tool and checking whether it stops in the same place every time. If it stops in the same place every time, that means that one point is disproportionately so heavy that it's always returning to that spot. If not, then the other small factors that will keep a wheel from rolling, friction, 
weird flat spots, maybe on the pe on the staff, a tiny flat spot, a tiny bit of dust. You know, um, the, 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 you know, if if one part of the wheel is not so heavy, then those small factors may cause it to stop in kind of random places. So that's um, that's what we want. There we go. Now the wheel has stopped in a completely different place. Pivots are still on the tool. And I can, I've done this a few times now. So um, the wheel is, give or take, in poise. And that's a great thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the hairspring back on. We're going to clean the balance complete. Then we're going to put it in the watch and see what our timing results are. Okay, that's the hairspring back on the balance. Now I'm going to put the balance, put the uh, watch roughly in beat. I'm not going to worry about it too much about the beat error because I know roughly where in beat is on this uh, balance wheel where the hairspring stud should be. Uh, I just want to check the rate right now. I just want to check, you know, is it in regulatable territory with the regulator that I have? Okay, and that's in beat, give or take on this watch. As I said, once I'm comfortable uh, with the rate and see if we're out of crazy territory, then um, then I can actually regulate the watch properly and put it uh, completely in beat. Okay, so now I'm going to clean the balance, then it's going back in the watch. Okay, a little watch is now running with what looks to be good amplitude. I guess something about 270 degrees. I'm not too worried about that right now. I know that it has sufficient amplitude for me to uh, check the rate. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, there's the watch uh, in a movement holder for now on the time grapher, the timing machine. And um, you may think this looks awful, but recall that I said that the rate of the watch before I poised the balance was about 850 seconds slow. This, with regulator dead centered, is about three minutes slow per day. Beat air is still kind of high, um, and the lift angle here is totally wrong, so ignore that amplitude, although I think it's about that. Um, so this is great. This is a big improvement. So now what we can do, put the watch in beat and regulate it. Okay, so here we are after setting the watch in beat and maxing out the regulator as fast as it can go. We're just making zero, but... Uh, power fluctuations are pretty are pretty prevalent here, which kind of illustrates the difficulty of working on these seven jewel watches. So I'm going to let this one run in for a few days, uh, just ignore it, and uh, come back to it in a little while. But uh, darn if it isn't a beautiful movement. That's uh, damascening the engraving on the plates is a real hallmark of American uh, pocket watches. Even on these very cheap uh, seven jewel watches, it's really it's really nice. Okay, thanks for watching.